Where I left off, I had added the gradient, so I'm starting to integrate features that deal with colors. What I haven't got yet is texture mapping, though. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. Let's take a look. All right, textures are up and running, and with a little bit of testing, I was able to make sure that other features were still working too, so I can render with UV coordinates that go into subparts of a texture. I can specify all zeros in the UV coordinates to just get solid color no matter what texture I'm using. And I also went ahead and made sure that I didn't have the bug that I had the last time I went through all this, which was something where the edges around a textured quad were sort of fuzzy and it had something to do with the softness or the outlines or something like that were causing it to not use full opacity on the edges of textured quads. And I think probably the fix that is here that is causing it to not have that problem comes from the fact that I, I didn't make the same mistake on how to do the smooth interpolation from the, you know, the, around the edges. I was using a smooth step before, and if you recall, I switched to doing a linear unlerp. And I think that that was just the biggest issue that came, that, that, that whole thing had led to a few issues with the first pass. And so as we are working on this, isolating that and fixing it is one of the big wins is that I shouldn't be using smooth step, but the unlerp, that seems to have everything looking pretty good. There's still one thing I want to do, which is to look at these textured shapes as they move around with the velocity parameter to make sure that that stuff looks good. Again, just like with everything else, there's only so far that I expect it to go. It doesn't need to get perfect and it can't get perfect in certain ways, but I want to make sure it's just like reasonable at least. The, you know, it should be able to get roughly the same or actually exactly the same effect as I get from an outline in the case of the outline texture that I was using to test. And I also want to make sure that it works nicely with the color gradients and all that. And then I'll be done for today. Applying velocity to the textured quads revealed an issue, which maybe I haven't seen before because maybe I never had uh, glyphs from my font system moving around before. 
uh, or maybe this is just an issue with this particular implementation, I'm not sure, but I'm getting pixels from neighboring Texel, or yeah, from neighboring Texel sort of blending in. So on my uh, UV coordinates, I sort of blocked the texture up into four quadrants and was mapping each of those four quadrants to a separate quad. But then when it started sliding around, it started sort of blending in little hints of the pixels on neighboring parts of the texture, which is not what I want it to do. So I want to think about why that is. And this is a good opportunity to do another pass uh, at getting more specific about how something works that I haven't done before. But I'm going to need to rearrange the test case a little bit so I can get more specific and test out some questions that I've got. I've looked before at how this sort of thing was working when it came to fragment uh, fragment centers or the pi pixel centers and how that related to computing fragments and interpolation. What I haven't looked at carefully is how the UV coordinate gets mapped onto a texture so that it, it so I, I want to figure out exactly what set of texels are getting grabbed for any given UV coordinate. That's a piece of that sort of being rigorous with OpenGL that I've never done, and this is a good opportunity to do that. So I'm going to take a pause on getting all this to work and instead go play with the texture question for a bit. That was pretty helpful. This time there were no big surprises. It turns out my understanding of UV coordinates and texture sampling was already pretty accurate and complete. But of course, it's nice to know that for sure by actually looking at it and seeing what's happening. So now I want to move on to solving the problem I was seeing earlier. First, I'll describe what I think is going on. So if I've got a texture with multiple images packed onto it like this, and then I take a UV coordinate right on the border of an image that's still in the middle of the texture, then it's going to actually be on the border of two different images. And when it goes to take a sample, it's going to grab values from texels in both the original image and in the neighboring image that I didn't want to sample from. And so what's, what's happening is when the when geometry was just sitting still and perfectly aligned to the pixels all the time and it wasn't being scaled or anything, those UV coordinates were always hitting the dead center of the texels. And so I wasn't getting any of this artifact showing up. But as soon as I started moving the geometry around, the UV coordinates, which are derived from originally from pixel centers, right? Those pixel centers become UV coordinates that no longer align perfectly to the centers of texels. So the UV coordinates are moving around relative to those texels, and I start getting some of my UV coordinates closer to that edge between the two images on my texture. And that's why that bleeding effect was flickering when things were when the when the textured quads were moving around. Now, 
The shader I wrote already did include a clamping stage, and it turns out that that's not going to be quite enough to solve the problem. And you can see the reason why in this diagram, the box that makes up the whole image includes all the way out to the edge of that image. And so if I clamp a UV coordinate to that, it can still land on a spot between two texels, right on the border between two texels. So what I actually need to do is take the box that represents the entire image and push in that box and clamp by that. I need to push in by exactly the size of one half of a texel on each side so that it's actually going to clamp the UV coordinates to within the, the border where it cannot sample from any other image. So let's give that a try. All right, it looks like that is fixing the issue. So now I can use one texture with multiple images. So long as I don't mip map it or something, I can at least sample from it without getting bleed over from neighboring images. So that's pretty cool. The final thing I want to do today is go in and actually do the mixing on the gradient colors with the texture and the motion of vector sampling all at once. So I'm going to go get that stuff working and call it a day. Thank you.